Everyone's talking about Claude Code right now. So what is it and how do you actually use it? I've been obsessing over this tool, learning from top AI developers and testing every feature that matters. Here's what I discovered. Claude Code isn't just another AI tool. It's probably the most powerful coding assistant available today, if you know how to use it properly. In this video, I'll show you the exact setup recommended by Claude Code's creator and the developers who are actually shipping real products with it. This setup might just make you ditch Cursor's agent for good. So let's dive in. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is go to Claude Code's website and copy and paste this code right here. We'll copy and paste this into a terminal shortly. So we're gonna open up a terminal here. Now you see I'm using Cursor Terminal. I'll get to why I'm doing that in a second. We'll copy and paste this command, press enter, install Claude Code. Usually just takes a few seconds. I've already done this, so I'm not gonna re-enter that command. So why am I using the cursor terminal here? Now, Claude Code is a CLI, command line interface tool, which means you are not working in a IDE like Cursor, Winsurf, VS Code. You are not seeing your files get populated, edited, created. But if you're using Cursor, VS Code, or some other code editor, you can see your files over here in the left-hand corner as Claude Code creates them. And you can chat with your files using Cursor. If you have a subscription, you know, why not use it? Like I said, Claude Code Code is a bit more powerful than Cursor, in my opinion, but Cursor still has its uses, and I like to kind of use Claude code in tandem like this. Now we're just gonna enter Claude in your terminal and press enter, and boom, you're started up. Now, if you're doing this for the first time, you're gonna have a slightly different setup, just a few steps to go through, which I'll show you in just a second. You'll have to go through some setup here. I recommend using dark mode, so you can just press enter, Yes, Claude Code account with subscription. Now, quick aside here, if you are on the pro plan, which is $20 a month, and you're using Claude Code, you're going to hit your usage limits pretty fast. And if you're using an API, which is uh, option two here, you can run up costs pretty quickly. You might see some posts on social media lately about people spending thousands of dollars on Claude Code. I don't recommend doing that. I, I recommend subscribing to the $200 a month plan, the max plan, which gives you 20 times the usage as the pro plan and includes a lot higher rate limits for Claude code. So far, I haven't hit, hit them at all. I'm sure you can if you have a massive code base and you're churning on this thing hours a day, but this is, this is plenty of bandwidth. All right. Login successful, press enter to continue. Now they give you a couple security notes here. For the terminal setup, I recommend using the default settings, but we can change those later. Now, when it says, do you trust the files in this folder? I've just opened a demo folder for these purposes. I've started Claude in there. So yeah, proceed. Okay, and now we can get started. So now that we're up and running, what is the best way to use Claude to get the most out of it, to make it the most powerful tool for you and whatever your coding projects are? Anthropic has published a couple of things on this. First of all, there's a best practice article that they put out a couple of months ago, and it still has some great tips in here about how to use Claude Code. Just a month ago, Boris Cherney at Anthropic, who's the creator of Claude Code, released this Mastering Claude Code video, which you can watch on YouTube. I'll link this in the show notes. A lot of useful tips and tricks in here. Now I've distilled all these down and we're gonna walk through each of these on how to set it up in your environment and your Claude code to make it work. So step number one is to set up your terminal with this terminal setup command. So what this will do, if you're in cursor, you don't really have to do anything because when you launch Claude code in the cursor terminal, it should automatically install this. But on other platforms, you might have to install this with this command. So what this is doing, this shift plus enter, the way Claude code works is if you start typing here, you know, build build app with XYZ features, and you want to start a new line, if you press shift enter like you would in talking to an LLM or in working with cursor, the default setting in Claude code is that it will just start working. It will, it will send off the command before you can enter the new line. So by doing the terminal setup command, you can make it so you can do shift enter to enter new lines and not have to do this. Uh, every time you want to enter a line, which I think is kind of annoying, you can just use it how you would normally use cursor. Now, the second thing I will show here is the plan feature. If you press shift plus tab, tab, plan mode, 
Now, what is plan mode? This is something that was rolled out recently by Claude Code, and this enables Claude Code to create a plan for you, um, basically to break down a task into micro steps that it can implement one by one and iteratively to better uh, get a better result for you. I highly recommend when you're giving something to Claude Code to use plan mode at each step. That way you're not burning through a bunch of your usage to try to one shot something that Claude may get on the first try, but it might not if it's too complicated and you haven't planned first. Plan mode enables you to kind of iterate on the plan and approve things before Claude code goes off and starts writing code for you. The next thing I'll point out is slash init. So once you start working in your project, this command will create a Claude.md file. What this basically is, is kind of a readme file, but also kind of like a cursor rules file or an agents.md file, if you're familiar with any of those, to be sort of a guidebook of rules, documentation, and steps that govern a project that you're working working on. And this is just sort of context. It's a way to store context that you don't have to keep feeding to Claude over and over again with each command. The next thing I'll point out is GitHub integrations. Claude code ships with native GitHub in integrations, namely the GitHub CLI, and they recommend that you use the GitHub CLI, but there are some other ways to use GitHub with your project. Now, what is the GitHub CLI? I'll put a link down in the show notes for this, but you know, it's just basically GitHub's command line interface. You can make pull requests, you can push code, you can merge code, you can create PRs and issues. Basically anything you can do on GitHub can interact with the command line. And when, uh, if you want Claude code to take actions on a code base you have in GitHub, it can do this pretty easily. All you have to do is install this. If you haven't already, you can either do this on a terminal. I'm on a Mac, so brew install GH, or you can just download the package right here at this link. So GH, which is Claude Code's recommended way to interact with GitHub, but you can also do this. You can type install GitHub app and enable GitHub actions within the GitHub interface. And let me show you how that works. So Claude released this GitHub actions about a month ago. And as you can see in this video that Anthropic released, you can just type at Claude within an issue on GitHub and ask Claude to fix it. And it will go out and do that for you, like running a, a sub agent within each of your issues. So you can see how powerful this is. Now I haven't played around with this too much. I'll show you what I use in just a second. So what I actually like to do is you can use cursors native GitHub integration via MCP, which I've disconnected to just show you guys here. Click connect here. Um, it'll pop up a window where you can just kind of one click connect your GitHub account to, to cursor. And that'll allow you to push changes uh, that you're making to the code to your GitHub code base. Now, why would you want to do this? So if you've ever used cursor, you know that there are checkpoints at each step that you take in the code. And you can go back to previous checkpoints. If you find that cursor is just running wild and jacking up your code, you can roll back. So when you're working with Claude code, there is no version control. There are things that you can do to build in version control on your own. And GitHub, I find, is the best way to do that. Basically, pushing sort of versions and checkpoints early and often to GitHub will allow you to have version control so that if Claude code messes up your code or does something you don't want, you can roll back to a previous version on GitHub. The other super cool thing about Claude code I want to show you guys is that Claude code is fully multimodal, even though it is a command line interface face, you can copy and paste images into it. So I have this app that I've created and on a Mac, you can press command control shift four. And what this will do, it will copy and paste a screenshot that you pull. You can just go over to Claude code here and it's not command V as you would think on a Mac, if that's what you're using. It's the same as what it would be on a PC control V. And you can see image dot image uh, slash one has been copied into the terminal you can say make changes to the hero section or whatever you want to do with the image that you've pasted in to change it in the code. And as Anthropic's documentation points out, you can feed in mocks that you've created in Figma or Mermaid, uh, any sort of visual elements you want to use to guide Claude code to make code in case you don't want to just talk to it uh, or use text. It Again, it's fully multimodal. So taking advantage of the image capabilities I found has been super useful. So the next thing I want to show you guys is how to integrate MC 
CP servers into Claude Code, which is super awesome. It can really level up how you interact with Claude Code. I'm going to go into MCP directory here by typing in uh, slash MCP. And you can see I've got two MCP servers here, Context 7 and Playwright, which I'll show you guys how to set up the commands to install those MCPs using a terminal command and to add them to Claude Code. I'll put these in the show notes below so you guys don't have to go look them up, but these are from the official documentation of Context 7 and Playwright. So why are these MCP servers so awesome? Now, let me just show you here what, what Context 7 is in case you're not familiar. So if you've coded with Cursor or any AI agent, Claude Code, et cetera, you know that one of the biggest hangups to coding and one of the biggest sources of errors is lack of context. So the way to feed better context to the LLM is to give it relevant documentation for the libraries and code bases that you're working with. That's why Context 7 is such an awesome MCP server. But Context 7 is basically a library of LLM friendly documentation that they've scraped and compiled into this database. And this documentation is for pretty much every possible tool or component that you could work with in your code. They've got stuff you see for Supabase, N8N, LangGraph, and you can search here to find stuff. And you can even copy and paste this and put it into Claude code. But I find that the MCP server is actually a better way to interact with this. So if we go back to our terminal, let's just press escape to get out of the MCP directory. We can tell Claude code to pull documentation. So we can just say, use the context seven MCP to pull the documentation for let's say N8N. So it will go and retrieve that. It will use one tool called library ID to actually you know, sort of match the request of what you're looking for, in this case, N8N with what's in the context seven database. And then it will use another tool to actually pull the documentation face. Okay, so let's proceed with that. It is pulling the relevant documentation now from context seven for N8N. And basically you can use this. I've asked a pretty generic question, but you can ask very specific things about how to do a specific task within this documentation or a specific feature within the documentation that you're working with or you're having trouble with and basically use that context to get a better result from Cloud Code. The other MCP I want to show you guys is Playwright. If you're not familiar with Playwright, it's basically a browser automation tool. You can use it to take screen screenshots of interfaces that you're working on, you can use it to basically interact with the browser through the tool that you're working with, whether that be cursor or Claude code. And that makes it easier for uh, the AI agent to iterate on the interface rather than having to manually take screenshots of everything and pass it in, which you totally can do. Playwright, I think, speeds up things quite well. So one of the prompts that was actually used in Boris's masterclass on Claude code that I mentioned earlier is to basically, if you want to pass a mock into Claude Code. Let's say you have a mock PNG. You then screenshot it with Playwright, or in the case of the masterclass, they use Puppeteer, which is another tool that is like Playwright, and iterate until it looks like the mock. But this is super powerful. I think this works really well. I find that this produces a much better UI to get the result that you want from a screenshot if it can iterate through Playwright and actually see the progress that it's making towards your goal. The next tip that I've learned uh, or that I want to show you guys is let's say you start this and you're like, wait a second, I don't want to do that. Just press escape and it will stop Claude code from doing anything. So pressing escape once interrupts the process. So you maybe you can retype the prompt or you can stop Claude code from doing something you don't want. If you press escape twice, it will pull up the previous messages that you've created in Claude code. So this is a way to kind of access chat history. And then another command that I would use, if you are using a very long chat with Claude code, the more you're running up against the context window, the worse results you're going to get. So what you can do to clear the conversation history and free up context is to type forward slash clear. Now you see there's also a command compact that will also clear the conversation history, but keep a summary within context. And the summary is basically a compact summary that the underlying LLM creates of the conversation history that you've had with Claude Code. Now I've had mixed results with this and I've seen a lot of other creators complaining about it on YouTube and X. So there are some kinks to work out with compact summary. You know, I might release a future video on some of the tools that I'm working with to get around that, but that is a deep rabbit hole to go down and uh, is outside the scope of this tutorial. So I'll quickly run through some final tips 
to use in Claude Code. And, and these come directly from Boris's masterclass on Claude Code. And I've already mentioned some of these, but some of these I'll just quickly cover. So if you press Shift plus Tab, you can auto accept edits, similar to YOLO mode in Cursor, where you're just sort of auto accepting things and vibe coding and, and not reviewing as much. If you want to add context or memory to the Claude.md file that I mentioned, you type in the hash command and then add the memory that you want to, to add. And again, that's just to add context or rules or relevant information to your Claude.md file to help give Claude more context the next time you talk to it about your project. If you want to mention files, this is very similar to Cursor and Windsurf. You can use the at symbol to add in a file or even an entire folder within your code base to the context. Again, I mentioned escape to cancel, double escape to uh, jump back in the conversation history. And there's another command here, hyphen hyphen resume will resume from the previous session. You can also do this by typing Claude hyphen C the next time you open Claude code to resume from the previous session. So there you have it. Claude code properly set up and ready to supercharge your development workflow. Now, if you found this helpful, I've got two things for you. First, grab my Claude code one page cheat sheet in the description below. This summarizes all the tips and tricks I shared in this video, plus a lot more. Second, if you want to add a stunning front end user interface to whatever you're building in Claude code, check out this video right here where I show you how to do that with V0 and Midjourney. And subscribe if you want more in-depth tutorials on Claude code. I'll be posting more in the coming weeks. So comment below on what you want to see next. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.